My name is Zach Weiss. I travel around the world as a consultant and contractor working on watershed restoration and ecosystem regeneration. And I really came to this work through a long apprenticeship with various different mentors, but the most important being Sepp Holzer, who really showed me a path for what humans can do to create positive change on landscape. Learning from the book of nature, it's the guide that's available to all of us all the time. We're pre-wired to understand and to read it. When you hear about indigenous populations talking about speaking with the animals, speaking with the trees, speaking with the plants, they're not speaking their language or English with these different things, but it's a, it's a communication, it's an awareness, learning how to read all of these different elements. And so throughout my life, nature has been the greatest teacher. Nature is always the one that I'm coming back to, to learn from. I remember as a kid thinking, sitting at the edge of the woods and thinking about how truth in human society is really just a matter of perspective. Each human holds their own truth and it's really hard to compare and contrast between those. But nature is the truth that binds all of us. And so from a very young age, I was looking at nature as the fundamental truth to teach us what we need to know in the world. When I started becoming aware of all the different ecological problems that we have and really understanding the depth of it, you start to see that there are these shining examples, people who have really tuned into their landscape and their place and created really beautiful examples of how humans can exist in synergy with the landscape. What I saw after seeing this as a giant missing part of the equation is there was no one bringing this experience, bringing this knowledge and skill to the different places. So you have these select examples of people providing really beautiful demonstrations of what's possible. But for all the other people that want to create that, there's no one to support them. And so it takes decades to learn enough to be able to work with their landscape. And so I created this business to fill that role, to travel around bringing the best skills and knowledge and techniques from all of these different examples all around the world and providing those to people so that we can just move them forward that much faster. We can take a decade of learning out of their experience and bring them right to that point so they can start living in the landscape rather than first learning how to create it. The, an easy way to test if something's dead is to just snap the end of it. Okay. So if you're not sure, I'll just come along and take that end. And if it snaps right over, uh -huh. you can kind of keep going down. I have one of my favorite experiences with Sep. They brought all these trees and he just takes one and he looks at it and the top's dead and he just snaps it and snaps lower and snaps lower and snaps oh. lower. It snaps all the way down and he says, this is fraud. These people should be put in jail. They sell you these trees and they're dead already before you even get them. And... All over the world, we're working with people who want to create a positive change. They see the problems in the world and they're really ready to actively move in implementing the solutions. And so I liken it to a person being lost in the woods. If a person's lost in the woods, if you give them a map, it might be helpful, but if they don't know how to read the map, if they don't know where the trail starts and where the trail ends, the map's not really that useful. And so what we do is we give people the map, but then we grab them by the hand and pull them down the trail. And so we drop them off down the trail with a map, having walked the first bit of the trail together. And so in that first phase, we really can help train the people so that they can continue walking down that trajectory on their own after we leave. So we work really in a three-phase process. The first phase is the initial site consultation and developing a concept plan for the project. So during this phase, we're meeting on site, we're talking with the landowners, seeing what their goals are, 
their life quality goals for living in this place. And then we're also analyzing the land and seeing what capacity it has, what natural resources are in place, and the best ways to maximize those. So during that first trip, we identify a concept plan for the project as a whole, and then the first phase that we'll look towards for implementation. And one of the things that sets us apart is that we really move as quickly as possible from that first phase to the implementation. It's wonderful to have a nice pretty drawing of what it can be like, but we're really focused on creating the pretty landscapes that people can live in rather than just the drawing. And so that next phase and my favorite, one of my favorite parts is the implementation phase. And so this is where we're coming on site with the full crew and actually building out what we've identified as a good means on the site to marry the goals of the people living there and the landscape itself. And how do we harmonize those two aspects? So this could be building in water retention features, terraces for an orchard, a natural swimming feature, all of these different things that might meet people's goals. And then the third phase is the ecosystem development. This is continuing to come back to the site over time and direct and nudge the ecosystem so that it's producing the different crops that humans may want to consume, or it's producing the different life quality means that people are aiming for, whether it's seeing a lot of wildlife, providing habitat for birds, being a net gain on the aquifer and the watershed. Uh, these are the pieces that we're really looking to accomplish. For me, there are two measures of success for my projects. One is that we've met the goals of the, of the person, the people living on the place, and we've married that with the ecological tendencies of the land. So we've made something that's healthier for the land, both immediately on location, but also the greater landscape. But it's also accomplishing the life quality goals of the people that we're working with. The other measure that I have for my projects is if you remove the human element, do these systems continue to be productive and healthy and develop? And so this is a measure of, are we working enough in harmony with nature so that if we remove our management and control, we actually reach a greater means than we started with? When you're working with natural systems, you have to be adaptive. There's no way but to be adaptive because the systems you're working with are constantly changing and adapting. And so I explain this a number of different ways. For the same, for the very same landscape and two different people, our solution should look very different. People are going to have different interests, different natural tendencies, all of these different things need to really be accommodated for in the work that we're doing. And by the same light, if what we implement looks exactly like the plan was drawn, we've screwed up. It should look different because we should be adapting as we're digging in the earth and finding different layers. Oh, there's a clay vein over here. And so maybe the water feature migrates in that direction, or there's a sand vein over here. And so we have to do something different. And so it's a very hard thing. You can't just develop a plan and hand it off to a contractor. 
because they're not going to have that adaptive thinking, that adaptive mindset. And this is where I'm so grateful to work with the people that I do because they also share this adaptive mentality. And even though they're sitting in a machine long hours, their brain is constantly racing with the different materials they're working with, how to properly stage things so that we really achieve a result that's in harmony with that natural adaptability. Good things take time. And when you're working with natural processes, they take time as well. And a lot of times, the different problems that people think they might have, the best strategy is to just wait and let nature take its course. For example, a certain insect is out of balance. If you try and immediately kill off that insect, you're gonna always be fighting that insect. Whereas if you rather let nature take its course, the predatory insect is gonna move in and actually gonna put that system in balance and create a long-term solution. And in our modern society, we're used to having whatever we want now. You order something online and it shows up a day later, two days later. It doesn't work that way with natural systems. We need to wait for the rains to fill the water bodies. We need to wait for the right times of year to plant. You need to work with the natural cycles or what you're doing is just a man-made abstraction of nature. There's only hope in action. If we know how to solve all the world's problems, it doesn't do anyone any good if it's not implemented. For a long time with this work, I was looking for hope, but now it's a feeling much greater than hope. I feel very confident that this is the change that will happen in the world. It's really more a matter of how quickly or slowly that takes place into action. What kind of landscape do we want to leave as the ancestors of future generations? Do we want it to be one of scarcity and fear? Or do we want it to be one of surplus and vitality and health? I want the latter, and so we work with people around the world developing these legacy projects so that all of our legacies are there for future generations to enjoy.